Welcome or welcome back. This is Structed, where we explain engineering concepts in plain English. Today's concept is buckling. Before we dive into that, I want to remind you all that there is a link down in the description below to 15% off anything from PPI. They are your one-stop shop for exam review materials and reference materials for the PE, FE, and SE exams. All right. What is buckling. If you've ever taken a ruler and held the ends, here's our little ruler with all our divisions on it, so on and so forth, and you push it in, you've seen that ruler bow on you pretty quickly. If you hold that ruler in the middle, keep it from bowing, and try to push it in again, it becomes much more difficult to bow, and when it does go, you get an S-curve. Buckling is another kind of failure that we need to avoid in structural, mechanical, any sort of engineering where we're dealing with the physical materials, because what we get is, instead of a nice, predictable, uh, this is going to be a load displacement curve, instead of a nice predictable curve where we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, and then we hit some yield. This is what we would see for a tension test of steel. And we're all familiar with this, where you're loading it up, You've got your nice linear elastic response, you hit some yield point, and then you hit a yield plateau, and eventually we get off into strain hardening and whatnot. So this is the stress-strain curve of steel that you're probably familiar with. Same thing for load displacement curve if you were doing a tension test. Now, if we instead take, instead of our nice little dog bone that we would test for tension test. That should really be in black. And you know what I'm trying to get at there. Instead of that, if we test a long slender rod and we put it in compression, we might get something that looks a little bit more like that, or like that, where we diverge from the curve. And that's because as we're loading this up, we can actually get a bowing. <clears throat> and if that column bows too much, then we've lost our capacity because it will bow way out. beautiful, doesn't it? You'll bow way out, you'll lose capacity long before you hit the same peak that you would, even though A36 steel has basically the same yield strength and compression and intention. You'll have this divergence, this bifurcation point where you'll buckle. You'll lose your ability to carry load. Similarly, if I take my sheet of paper here and I start pushing on it, this paper can no longer support any additional compression load. It's not that I've yielded the paper, it's that I have bent it too far off to where I, get, I end up getting so much distance between the line of action of my forces and the midpoint of my column that we're introducing huge moments in here. Now you might be wondering, okay, how is a perfectly applied concentric load in this ideal column land going to cause us to buckle? So our causes buckling. We could have initial out of straightness, 
your perfectly straight column isn't quite perfectly straight. There are tolerances in structural steel, in any physical material. Nothing is perfectly straight. It might be straight enough, but there's always some initial out of straightness. Depending on your material, that could be substantial. If you've ever looked at the long, lighter structural shapes on a steel rack, you know what I'm talking about. They are not straight. You've got lack of homogeneity. Your material might be non-homogeneous. You might have slightly different thermal stresses in the material from the way it cooled. You might have concrete that has more aggregate on one side than on the other, or you might have wood that just is naturally going to be stronger in some areas, weaker in others. It might be stiffer in some areas, weaker in others. If you've got heartwood and sapwood in the same board, you can load it concentrically. It's not going to work. You're going to have to actually load it cheated to one side or the other to get that perfectly straight wooden beam that might have some heartwood and sapwood to not bend. You could have a disturbance. Think back to, as a kid, standing on an aluminum can. And if you were very careful with it, you could stand right on the middle of the can, and your little can little flares in it, wouldn't crush under a very large load. But then your buddy came by and poked it. Just barely poked that wall of the can with his toe. And the whole thing crumbled in. And you ended up with a flat can. And maybe you fell on your face. So some sort of a disturbance, some sort of perturbation that bumps that column to the side. Um, in the case of blast-resistant buildings, you can't load, you can't put the blast load from the facade into the columns because you might knock the columns out and crumple the building. And finally, you could have some sort of an eccentricity in your load. You just haven't loaded it quite smack in the middle, which is likely. In real beams, or columns, or structural members of any sort, you're likely to have a little bit of all of these going on. Steel is pretty homogeneous, so you're not likely to have lack of material homogeneity, but you might have differential cooling or things like that, where the side that was down on the rollers cooled faster, or one side had a little bit more air flowing over it, whatever it may be. Um, we have two kinds of buckling. We've got elastic buckling and inelastic buckling. Elastic buckling is your ruler. buckles and comes back. And for inelastic, a great example is your aluminum can, where once that the walls of that buckle, if you take your foot off that can, it's not magically springing back. And the difference here is largely one of how far you push the material. If you were to take a steel ruler and buckle it and then keep on pushing, keep on pushing, eventually you'll hit the yield point and it will yield on you. But if you have that same steel ruler and you just barely buckle it, you're still in the elastic region. So actually with uh, steel beams, your length, brace length, and we'll get into more of that later, versus your strength of that beam. There's a plateau where you're not buckling, the full plastic moment of the beam. There's an elastic buckling region, 
and then there's an inelastic region where it drops off much faster. Same thing for other kinds of buckling. If you buckle it a little bit, you get a predictable elastic response that can be recovered, and if you buckle it a lot, it's gone. So, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Again, we've got our link below, and if you've enjoyed this content, like, subscribe, comment below if there's anything more that you would be interested in learning about, and I'll catch you on the next video.